Tony, this is SV Tapatia, and uh, start off by saying a Happy New Year to you all. This is the first episode of 2024. Um, yeah, it's all fairly wet out, it's getting quite chilly now, and next week's forecast to be quite cold. The whole holiday period has been quite wet, there's lots of flooding around about, our cellar's very damp, the ground's pretty saturated, but we're in here in the workshop, it's dry here. I have a heater on occasions and um, I've been get, getting on with a few things and this video this week is just going to be about the wind vane um, because one of the things that I've done over the holidays is, is taking the time to review the plans. Uh, I bought the plans from Alan of Wave Rover to build the wind vane and what you get is, is some drawings and access to three videos. And so I say, I've taken a bit of time to review those drawings and watch the videos again. And uh, I've learnt a couple of things from that that I hadn't understood correctly before. Uh, it doesn't affect what, what I've done at all. What I've done is all fine. But um, a couple of new thoughts. And, and what I've mainly, the biggest breakthrough, is that I now understand something I put a bit of thought into. I now understand how you engage and disengage this wind vane without having to reach back to the rudder. Um, and in fact, when, you, when you've when you grasped it, yeah, it's all done from the tower unit, engaging it, setting it into the wind, engaging and disengaging of the vane. So that's really, really good and very easy to do. So I'll get to that and explain how it all works very soon. Well, it's a wind vane that's being built uh, to the designs from Alan of Wave Rover. Uh, I bought the plans from him and they are available for you to buy. And certainly if you're interested in buy, building one of these, I would recommend buying the plans from him. I think it would be fair to say that um, he has not actually, you know, completely designed this himself. He's just adapted uh, ideas that are freely available on the internet. But... Um, He's come up with this. This is the tower element of it. There's a couple of different veins laid there beside it. And around this end, you'll see the trim tab just starting to be built. It's got a stainless steel shaft and uh, at the moment, three layers of half inch plywood, which will be glued up together. It'll be shaped to a foil shape and then glassed. Um, and so that's the entire structure. Now, years ago, I built my own wind vane and it was a very, very simple design. It only worked from the power of the wind. And it worked sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. But any good wind vane needs some kind of power amplification. And there are a few different systems for that. And the trim tab is one of those. And it works by putting this very small rudder on the back of the main rudder. And when the trim tab rudder turns in the water flow the force of that pushes the main rudder one side or the other and that's what steers the boat so that's your, your servo mechanism and so this is very very simple the vane that you see behind me here just blows in the wind you set it so it's facing into the wind and if the boat wanders off course it blows one way or the other and lines from that go to the trim tab that turns the trim tab and the, I say the water flow over the trim tab then pushes the main rudder one side or the other and that's what steers the boat. Of course when you come to build it you're going to adapt it a bit or at least you may well do adapt it to suit the tools equipment and materials that you've got available and I've very much done that. Let's have a look through. We've got this plywood base that will be fitted to the boat and we'll be able to rotate so you can face the vane into the wind. The base basically is just a, a holder for the uh, shaft that runs through here. I've used a bronze shaft through there and lines come off this pulley, go down through the middle of the base, the tower unit and off to the top of the trim tab.
There are three different sizes of vein. Big one for light layers. This one, when I put it in, actually is a bit too big. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Uh, because it, it doesn't, the, the balance weights aren't enough to counterbalance it. I've got a very small one for strong winds. And this mid-sized one for normal condition, shall we say. Um, this fits into this H-frame. It's supposed to fit centrally, as I say, but this slot's a bit tight. We'll be changing that. Fits into this H-frame, and the H-frame is on a pivot. I've used a bronze rod for the pivot, for the shaft. I've got P-O-N bearings that the shaft turns in. And one of the things I said last time was that it's essential that this H-frame and the pulley lock to the shaft. I now know that's not true. Doesn't matter. You could have the H-frame pivoting on the shaft, the shaft could be fixed and not move. As long as the H-frame can rotate, it doesn't need to rotate with the pulley. Because and the lines that come up the middle simply come over the pulley and then through a hole in the H-frame here and then into a cam cleat. And that is how you put tension on the lines coming from the trim tab to the vein and make it either active or, or not active. So um, it doesn't matter, this pulley is only really guiding those lines. It, the lines are fixed to the H frame here, and that's what pulls them and turns the trim tab. So, as I say, it's actually not essential that this pulley is locked to the shaft. I will lock it to the shaft, I've made it sort of locked to the shaft. So I've got these bronze locking pieces here, I've got the pulley in the middle, bronze shaft, POM bearings, and you need some balance weights. Put one of those each side there as the counterbalance weights. Beautiful. Beautiful that is, really nice.
Oh, you're not taking the order, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I've made a couple of, in this case, bronze, and it's a bit silly, but I had the bronze. A couple of bronze counterweights. Now, bronze is almost 9,000 kilos a cubic metre, and Alan uses lead counterweights, which is the much more sensible material. Lead's a bit over 11,000, so it's, uh, bronze is about 75% the density of lead, basically. So I've made them correspondingly bigger um, and put two balance weights on, as you can see there threaded them up, screwed them on there. Gives me the option to remove one if need be, if I want less counterweight. Um, and, but as you can see, that's all swinging quite nicely there. And looks quite hopeful. But there we go, that's it for this week. I should be getting on. I've got the trim tab to glue up and shape. I do want to take it up to the boat and just try it in position before I get too far ahead with it um, and I should be doing that this week and also having a look at the boat check she's all right in the in the rain that we've had and all of that um, I've also I've made a good start in fact it's nearly finished a good start on the spare tiller so I should be showing you that next week as well so a few things coming up have a great week a massive thank you from me to the lovely people who support us on Patreon and via PayPal. All right, see you next time. Bye.